Amen. Hallelujah. Good evening, family. Hey, man. Uh, we won't be before you long on tonight. But God has something to say tonight. Hey, man. Uh, share this word with someone who needs it. Share this word with someone who may be going through a struggle in this season. Share, share, share. Share, share, share. Deacon Curtis, good to see you. Amen. We're going to give it another two minutes and then we're going to get started on tonight. Always encouraged by uh, seeing each of you. Always encouraged by seeing each of you on. Hey man, we really did have a good uh, prayer call on Tuesday where we were uh, examining uh, spiritual gifts. Hey man, and uh, I really do have time I really do love to take time to hear from you guys and to uh, I appreciate your honesty on where you are um, because if I don't know where you are I can't try to direct you uh, if you're telling me you're somewhere that you're not amen Hallelujah. If you would this evening, turn with me in your Bibles and please share this word. Please share this word. Share this word on tonight. Share this word. Share this word. Share this word. Hallelujah. I want to say happy birthday to Danielle. She made 22 on today. Hallelujah. She is part of the Evans crew. And we want to say happy birthday to her. Um, we know that that is a significant age. And, and um, uh, I think we are, we'll be having on Sunday, we'll be having a pink out Sunday. We'll be having a pink out Sunday. And so uh, for those of you who have uh, migrated back to the building, we'll be having a pink out Sunday. I'm excited about that. And um, I'm excited um, that we get a chance to have fun and, and this is such a significant month because it is breast cancer it is breast cancer awareness month uh, in addition to that uh, I thank thank God for each of you uh, who helped me celebrate pastors appreciation month on uh, um, well it's all month pastors appreciation month amen so I'm still being appreciated amen and so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, uh, I'm glad to, uh, I'm glad to uh, be, um, that we can celebrate um, those amazing moments. Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Genesis 12. Genesis 12, and we'll be looking at the first through the fourth verse. Genesis 12, the first through the fourth verse. And I want you guys to do something for me. I want you guys to respond because it's, uh, it's uh, your responses are, uh, they are the interaction in the service. And, and, and so if you don't respond, amen, uh, uh, it makes it even more difficult, amen. This is a difficult, this is a difficult situation for um, preachers because um, 
we have to be encouraged, amen, uh, without uh, seeing faces, amen. And so your responses and your shares, they mean a great deal to me, amen. Uh, so let's engage in this word on tonight, Genesis 12, 1 through 4. When you have it, say amen. And verse 12 says, uh, the, um, the first verse, uh, 12, 12 chapter, first verse says, The Lord had said to Abel, Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to a land that I will show you. Verse 2 says, I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the people on the earth will be blessed through you. And so Abram went as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out to Haran, the earth where the Sephira was faith. But the word of our Lord will remain forever. The earth withers, the flowers fade. But the word of our Lord will remain forever. Father, Father God, hide me behind your cross. Um, this is your word for your people. God, I give you glory. I give you honor. Strengthen me on tonight. I give you glory, honor, and praise. In the matchless mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, we'll be using for a short subject on tonight. Find somebody in your close proximity and tell them, let it go. I gave you a little time to do that. Find somebody in your close proximity and, tell, and say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. You're doing too much. Let it go. That's dragging you down the wrong path. Let it go. It's interrupting who God called you to be. Let it go. Help me, Holy Ghost, on tonight. Let it go. You think it's cute, but you ain't going nowhere going down that path. Let it go. The spirit of familiar seems to affect us all at some point or another. And one of the hardest things to do is to let, um, is to let something um, that was once good to you is to let it go. And most of us have fear and we wonder, is there anything better than this dysfunctional stuff that we're going through? Come on, let, let, let's just admit it this evening that, that sometimes the flesh feels good to us. Have I got a witness up in here? And if it didn't feel good to us, um, we wouldn't keep going back to those uh, same old things, even though it's leading us um, down the same wrong pathway. Help me, Holy Ghost. When dysfunction is present, it's going to take courage and strength and a strong discernment to hear from God when he says, let it go. Even, um, um, even a past season, have I got a witness, and we spent a lot of time um, trying to recapture a past season because it was good to us. But you can't continue to hold on to something that God said, let go. Even if it blessed you a while ago. If God says, let it go, baby, you got to let it go. Songwriter said, don't you carry nothing that might be a load. Ease on down the road. But some of us are stuck in the same uh, season because, have I got a witness, we won't let it go so we can progress. 
We say we want elevation and we say we want a new level. Have I got a witness up in here? But you still trying to. You've been on the usher board for 15 years. Screaming about elevation whenever somebody, whenever God starts to send somebody or migrate somebody else in, you get an attitude. Let it go. When it's time to let go. So my question is, what are you, um, what are you holding on to that God has said let go? I think I'm preaching to myself tonight. Let me get off into the text for y'all stop liking me. Abraham finally, uh, in our text, Abraham has finally come to uh, an agreement with God and he discovered that there are some places that Lot can't go. And there are some places we can't go with Lot, have I got a witness? And so God informs Abram, have I got a witness of his plan to bless him and to make him a blessing. Somebody gonna get that tomorrow because God is not um, just blessing you for you. Have I got a witness? You are blessed to be a blessing. So God has informed us, have I got a witness of his desire to bless us. And God begins to lay down the, um, the conditions for Abram to become um, this blessed man of purpose and promise. The first thing he does, he says, that the first instruction he does is he, he says, um, he said he must leave his country and his kinfolk. He got to leave his relatives, Puka and Ray Ray and all of them. And, the second, and, and, and another thing he has to do, he got to get up out his father's house. I tell my sons all the time, you ain't a man until you get up out of here. Have they got a witness? Because there can't be two men in a house. One of us got to be a boy. And it ain't me. The second thing, he's, the second thing he says is, he must follow with no knowledge of where he's going. Abraham was surrounded by an ungodly system. Have I got a witness? And God was calling Abram out of the system of many gods. They worship many different gods. Have I got a witness? And I got to tell you tonight that God will never be satisfied uh, um, to be among, uh, have I got to witness the other gods in your life? Let that sink in. What has become um, your God? Was it your house? Was it your education? Was it your car? Was it your kids? Was it your religious position? Whatever it is, if God says let it go, have I got a witness? If God says you can't take it with you, have I got a witness? You better leave that thing alone. Those who would follow God must follow on the example of Abram and, and renounce and dethrone um, every rival and crown. Uh, have I got a witness uh, of Christ alone? Um, you got to recognize that Christ alone um, is Lord and he is God uh, and he must be Lord and God of your life. Many of God's people today they're trying to serve the God as one of many. Help me, Holy Ghost. I hope nobody don't get mad. You want God, but have I got a witness? You want God, but um, you, you, you still want to worship your career. You want God, but you still want to um, worship your house. Have I got a witness up in here? You're trying to fit God into a comfortable time slot. I got to ask you, um, where is he on your priority list?
Some of us, we say we want God, but we don't want, you don't want God to inconvenience you. Help me, Holy Ghost. People worship all kinds of God, and they're, they're those who worship the God of convenience. People um, worship the God of um, materialistic things. Have I got a witness up in here? Um, that you want the money, the cars, and the clothes. Uh, have I got a witness at the God? Some of us want to um, want to worship the God of popular uh, opinion. Have I got a witness up in here? Um, you um, have I got a witness? You you you're so um, interested in what people think you are. Have I got a witness? Instead of being who you gonna be, have I got a witness? They worship the God of Creation. Uh, have I got a witness up in here? Uh, uh, um, um, and, 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 and you don't want to come to church because um, the Texans and the Cowboys uh, are coming on. Uh, have I got a witness and they ain't paying uh, uh, none of your bills? Uh, have I got a witness and they ain't got a spot for you uh, uh, in Texan and Cowboy heaven? Like Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar designed and set up his own image to be worshipped as the God. And multitudes of people in our churches, we've done the same thing. They have uh, designed in their imagination the kind of God that they want. Help me, Holy Ghost. And they worship the God of their own creation. And they began to call it the God of heaven. And then they the, uh, watch this, their God, um, have I got a witness, they put their, um, their God put sports uh, and entertainment above the word of God. Their God never chooses, um, have I got a witness, uh, um, their God never chooses uh, um, to chastise uh, and discipline them. He never, he never hurts their feelings and he never hurts their pride. Uh, he never requires uh, um, humility. He never requires submission. And best of all, their God doesn't interfere um, with their lives. He just sits there uh, on a shelf uh, um, waiting for them to have a problem uh, um, so that they can pull him down, uh, um, rub him on his belly uh, um, like a genie, uh, um, like a magic lantern. Uh, have I got a witness then when everything uh, is back to normal? Uh, um, they put him back on the shelf uh, until the next time uh, they have a problem again. Help me, Holy Ghost. God called Abram. Hear me well on this part. So God calls Abram to come out of a hostile environment. And it wasn't necessarily hostile to Abram, but to call and the operation of God's spirit in his life. And some of us are in uh, environments right now that are hostile. What are you talking about, Ross? Some of us are in environments right now um, that, are, that are hostile um, to the place that God wants to take us. Can I prove it to you? Every time we get around certain people, we, we get the urge to talk like they talk. To walk like they walk. Have I got a witness up in here? The leader in you dissipates every time you get around. Have I got a witness up in here? Those folk. I want you to take a minute and find out who those folk are. You know who they are. Can you hear the Jeopardy, the Jeopardy songs playing in your head? Huh? So God called Abram out of an environment that was hostile to his call. Have I got a witness up in here? Every time you get around those certain type of people, um, they leave you feeling drained. Have I got a witness? Um, they leave you feeling dry and empty. Have I got a witness? And every time you get around them, uh, um, they drag you into uh, uh, some petty foolishness. Have I got a witness that, that, that weakens your anointing? Have I got a witness? And I want to tell you on a Wednesday night um, that you need to learn the lesson that Abram learned. 
How I got a witness and that lesson was uh, the wrong people in your life uh, can keep you uh, away from your destiny. Many of God's people, many of us will miss our destiny because we allow um, the wrong people access to our lives. Can I go somewhere else this evening? Every preacher shouldn't have the right to speak into your life. I said it. Every preacher shouldn't have the right to speak into your life. And just because uh, somebody calls themselves um, prophet know-it-all, have I got a witness up in here? Uh, don't mean that they know it all. <laughs> have I got a witness up in here? Uh, don't come up in my face. Uh, I'm prophesying no uh, house and no car. Uh, have I got a witness up in here? Uh, don't come up in my face. I'm uh, uh, telling me uh, I'm going to be the next this or the next that. Have I got a witness? Uh, because I'm prophecy. Uh, it's only confirmation uh, of something uh, uh, God already revealed to me. Hmm. Every brother don't want to see you blessed. Can I give you an example? David's brothers who criticized him uh, for coming into the battlefront. Uh, have they got a witness in Joseph's brothers uh, um, who betrayed him? Uh, um, they threw him up in, in a pit. Have they got a witness? Uh, and they began to do the Kevin Hart. Uh, uh, they began to laugh at them at his pain. Uh, have I got a witness up in here? Uh, but not only did they throw him in the pit, uh, um, but the Bible gives record that they sold him uh, uh, into slavery. And some of our greatest enemies uh, to our destinies uh, are sitting uh, uh, real close to you in the church. Uh, some of the greatest uh, deterrents to your destiny. Uh, have I got a witness up in here? Um, they call you uh, for about an hour or two. Uh, and they ain't got nothing but complaints. Uh, um, they ain't got no good news. Before long, before long, you, you said about the same thing that you used to be happy about. Help me, Holy Ghost. Hmm. Can I give you another example? The Israelites allowed 10 of their fellow brethren to talk them out of their destiny. It wasn't the devil, no. It wasn't even their enemies. It was their friends. Uh, anybody old enough to remember the rapper Houdini, he said, friends, how many of us have them? The ones we can depend on. Before we go any, any further, let's be friends. He says, some are okay and they treat you cool, but some will mistake your kindness for being a fool. We like to be with some because they're funny, but others come around. I know Deacon, you're laughing over there. Others come around when we need some money. Friends, everybody in the church ain't ready to press in. Everybody in the church ain't ready to cross over the Jordan. Have I got a witness up in here? Everybody in the church ain't ready to take possession of their promised land and, and those who will not cross over uh, um, will do their best to keep you um, from crossing over. God told Abram, uh, he said, I'm going to bless you uh, and I'm going to make your name great. Uh, have I got a witness? I'm going to make you a great nation. Uh, have I got a witness in that all the nations of the earth uh, uh, would bless him? Uh, have I got a witness in what God didn't? 
tell Abram uh, was what he was going to, uh, to have to go through. Uh, somebody missed their shout. Uh, uh, before he would get the promise. Uh, uh, before he would experience all of this. Uh, and some of you today, um, you're going through um, um, some tough times. And, and you're going through some things. Uh, have I got a witness there? Um, uh, some things that are absolutely uh, um, contradictory uh, um, to the promises of God. Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, um, you have a prophetic word. Uh, have I got a witness? Prophecies. Uh, have I got a witness that um, that you know um, you know they're from God? Uh, um, but all the natural evidence says it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna happen. But I came to tell you on a Wednesday night. I came to tell you that hold, I came to tell you to hold on because change is coming. And one of the greatest activities of faith is being able to wait on God, is being able to trust him when you can't trace him. Have I got a witness since the beginning? Um, you you got to be able to trust him um, when all hell is breaking loose against you um, to stand like Paul, uh, um, the apostle, and say, Sirs, I believe God. Have I got a witness that it shall be um, even as it was told to me? Help me, Holy Ghost, Numbers 23 and 19 uh, it says it like this it says God uh, is not a man uh, um, that he should lie uh, neither the son of man uh, um, that he should repent uh, uh, and if he said he gonna do it uh, uh, somebody missed the shout again uh, if he spoke it uh, have I got a witness he um, he gonna make it good uh, have I got a witness up in here now 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 Ross don't get ahead of yourself watch this Abram is just like a whole lot of us. He's just like a whole lot of us because he had some trouble obeying God. Help me, Holy Ghost. I hope somebody gets delivered of this tonight. He had some trouble obeying God. At first, it seems as though Abram is the perfect, obedient servant. But watch this. He was only partial obedient. And partial obedience equals disobedience. <laughs> watch what happens here. Abram he delays his own blessing because he was only partially obedient. I think I need to say that again. Abram, he delays his own blessing because he was only partial obedient. Don't shoot the messenger, y'all. Many times uh, um, we delayed the promises of God coming to pass in our lives. Uh, uh, it wasn't the devil, it was you. Uh, um, because we have only been partially obedient. Notice what it said in verse 7 and 8. Notice, watch this. Abram is building the altars to God. Abram is praying. But Abram ain't obeying. And like many of us, we're praying and we're hoping um, to get a word out. Have I got a witness? Uh, have I got a witness? Uh, um, we're, we're praying and we're hoping uh, um, to get a word to get us out uh, of the word that God has already spoken over our lives. Have I got a witness? Somebody going to get that tomorrow. Just rewind it. Or we're praying, have I got a witness to try to get God to change his mind. We're willing to pray, but we don't want to obey. And Abram knows that he um, um, is to separate himself from Lot. But he's like us. And we know when God deals with an area in our life, we know the conviction of the Holy Spirit. But it's hard to get rid of something uh, um, that has become uh, um, so much a part of us. 
If it was sin, we'd be quick to obey. Because we know that sin separates us from God and, and it'll, it'll, it'll eventually destroy our soulless realm. So Abram, um, he wasn't trying to cover up sin. Uh, he was just holding on to flesh. Wow. <laughs> Watch this. He was just trying to save a little bit of what God told him to get rid of. Somebody just got convicted right there in that moment. I'll give you a second. He was trying to save a little bit of what God told him to get rid of. That's what Lot represents. A little bit of what God told you to leave a long time ago. Lot was Abraham's um, flesh connection. He was his connection to the old country. He was somebody that he can reminisce with about having got a witness. I'm great. It used to be having got a witness up in here. I know I'm talking to somebody this evening. And it's dangerous, it's dangerous, greater love. It's dangerous um, to run with people that always want to talk about uh, um, uh, uh, how good it used to be uh, and how fun you was, uh, how crazy you was. Uh, how we got a witness in all the crazy stuff uh, um, you did before you got saved. Uh, um, when Abraham left uh, um, his homeland, uh, um, Lot uh, um, was um, just uh, a tag along. trying to get right he was just hanging he was a small reminder of the old stuff but soon a lot had increased in strength soon lot had increased in number until have I got a witness there was strife between a uh, um, lot uh, and destiny have I got a witness in other words in other words in other words uh, um, the flesh had grown uh, have I got a witness up in here uh, um, flesh had uh, uh, increased uh, until it was almost equal in strength uh, uh, to the spirit man uh, I think you better preach tonight Ross The devil doesn't want, the devil, how can I say this, Ross? The devil doesn't have to get rid of sin for you to forfeit your destiny. The only thing that he has to do is get you to let your flesh have the upper hand in your life. Because he knows that um, the carnal mind uh, is against God. Uh, have I got a witness? And uh, um, um, the carnal mind is not subject uh, um, to the law of God. Uh, um, neither indeed can be. Uh, um, have I got a witness? So then uh, um, they are uh, um, after that. that um, 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 they are after the flesh. Because he knows that when you when you are after the when it goes after the flesh, um, that when you become in the flesh, have I got a witness up in you? Yeah, you still got the same old dance, but baby, you in the flesh. You still speak your tongue every now and then, but baby, that ain't nothing but flesh. And the devil don't mind you dancing and speaking in tongues. As a matter of fact, he, he gets a good laugh out of a whole lot of us. Because he knows that God ain't nowhere in it. Because you have let your flesh take over. And your spirit man is dwindling. Help me, Holy Ghost. Abraham's delayed obedience has permitted his flesh to reach a place where there is now um, there is now a battle there is now strife there is now uh, contention 
And you can never isolate flesh in one little, uh, one little compartment. Have I got a witness? Uh, um, because flesh is arrogant. Have I got a witness? Flesh is out there. Um, flesh is extra. It wants to be seen. It wants to be recognized. Finally, Abram, he recognizes their that they can no longer dwell together. The land could not bear them. There could not be, and there can never be, there won't ever be two landlords. Either the flesh is going to rule the spirit. Help me, Holy Ghost. Or the spirit is going to overrule the flesh so Abraham tells Lot he say watch this look he said look here it's time for us to separate <laughs> are you thinking about what your lot is tonight I want you to just, just in, in your own mind and say it's time for us to separate you know what your lot is it's time for us to separate. It's time for us to separate. Abraham tells Lot, it's time for us to separate. He says, watch this, he says, I gotta get rid of you. Hallelujah. Whichever way you choose to go, I'm going in a different way. Whichever way you choose to go, I'm going the opposite way. Here is a recognition that the flesh and the spirit are at war. Have I got a witness of it? That's why whenever you, whenever you on a mission to transition, Satan always sends that, 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 that test your way. And either you pass or you fail. And even if you fail, even if you fail a few times, even if you fail a bunch of times, I want you to have enough Holy Ghost in you to get up and try again. Have I got a witness up in here? I want to remind you on a good Wednesday night that you can't tame the flesh. And you can't train the flesh to be holy because it don't want to be. The flesh got to be crucified. <laughs> Have I got a witness up in there? The Bible gives record as I close. The Bible gives record that immediately, immediately after the separation, then God speaks to Abram. Notice that he's able now he's now able to see what God has prepared for him. I felt that in my shana now. After you're willing to break your flesh connection, you'll be able to see clearer what the what the plan is for your life. Rest in peace. Uh, my friend Johnny Nash, he had a song out that says, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles that were once in my way. It's going to be, and when that's gone, it's going to be a bright and sunshiny day. 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, it says, But as it was written, eyes have not seen ears have not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Lot means that, that watch this, it means covering uh, to wrap closely or tightly. That means that flesh uh, will keep you uh, up from seeing and receiving um, what God has prepared for you. Only by the Spirit can you see and receive what belongs to you. Somebody gonna get that tomorrow. 
And I'm really trying to bring this message to a close, but uh, somebody here on tonight is standing uh, on the verge of one of the greatest uh, uh, moments of your life. We call it a breakthrough. Come on, just type it in. That's me. I'm, that's me. I feel like I feel like I'm on the verge of a breakthrough. I feel like I'm on the break, on the verge of a breakthrough. I, I feel it. I feel it. I feel it in the atmosphere. <laughs> Have I got a witness? I, I don't feel no way tired. I, I come too far. I'm from where I started from. I'm right at the tip end of my breakthrough. I decree and I declare. I decree and I declare that you're getting ready to get breakthrough. You're getting ready to step into the promises of God for your life. You're getting ready to experience the destiny um, that's been prophesied uh, over your life, Lisa. Um, but that's one little thing, uh, have I got a witness, that'll keep you from stepping in. Uh, and that's one thing uh, um, that'll keep you, uh, have I got a witness, that's one thing uh, um, that'll keep you uh, 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 um, just stepping, I'm uh, um, just standing and looking at breakthrough, uh, at one little thing uh, um, that stands between uh, you and your breakthrough, uh, and that one little thing I uh, will rob you uh, of your destiny uh, if you let it if you let it if you let it come on tell some come on come on type it in that's me that's me that's me you know what that little thing is called it's called lot lot is that little piece of your flesh Lot is that little thing of your flesh. But you got to cut covenant with Lot. You got to kick him out of your life. Why? Because God sent him still to the cross. Lot will blind you to your inheritance. Lot will blind you to your destiny. Lot will make you think you're walking in purpose when you ain't. And can I tell you something else as I close? If you don't deal with it, it'll deal with you. It will rob you of your destiny. The Bible gives record that just as Abram separated himself from Lot, we got to separate ourselves from our own personal Lot. We got to separate ourselves uh, uh, from our uh, carnal man, from our flesh. And the instrument of this separation is the cross Galatians 5 and 24 and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust Romans 8 and 13 if you live after the flesh you shall die but if you through the spirit to modify the deeds of the body, you shall live. Let it go. Let it go. You can't hold on to it and grow. Let it go. Because it's keeping you from a greater place. Let it go. Because it's a cancer to your destiny let us pray Lord we thank you for the word we realize that it may be hard but if we want progress if we want destiny 
we got to let go of the things that are keeping us back so Lord we thank you for the word we know that after this word after this life changing word our lives will never be the same in Jesus name we pray amen if you're here tonight and you say God I want to this is my night if you feel that this is your night for an extreme makeover. Would you say the sinner's prayer with me? It's real simple. God, I admit that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. But you said that if I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart, then I would be saved. God, I need you to come into my heart. I accept you right now as my Lord and my personal Savior. That's a, good, that's a good place to give God some glory and to give God some praise. Hallelujah. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Hallelujah. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's offering. Uh, come on, sow some, sow a seed into good ground. Uh, the giving links are online. Hallelujah. I want to give some shout outs tonight. This is my virtual hug moment. Hallelujah, sow a seed. Your seed is a photograph of your faith. Your seed is a photograph of your faith. Hallelujah. So sow a seed into good ground tonight. Hallelujah. If you desire personal prayer for a private situation, you know that you can inbox me personally. Hallelujah. You can inbox me personally or you can send it into the greater love. Uh, 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 inbox. Um, Lisa and Ned gave me an idea a few weeks ago, and I don't want y'all to think that I ignored the idea. I'm just trying to figure out how do we set this up, and who's gonna man, who's gonna man the phones, and we're gonna be able to um, physically pray with you. We're gonna give you a line, and we're gonna be able to physically um, sit up and pray with you and agree with you in prayer. Uh, on some situations and I think we're going to start it I think we're going to start it Sundays on Sundays amen we're going to figure out a time and, and when that time comes we'll be able to uh, sit up for a, about an hour or whenever or however long after church and we'll be able to man the phones amen uh, if you want to physically uh, have somebody touching uh, um, um, physically agree with you in prayer about a situation Amen. So we're going to be very diligent on that. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Once again, happy birthday. Happy birthday, Raquel. Hallelujah. I'm sending out some virtual hugs to Romisha. Hallelujah. Hey, Roach, she's part of the, uh, the Evans crew. Uh, Deacon Curtis, Deacon Curtis. Deacon Curtis, man, I sure miss you. I'm going to reach out to you by tomorrow. Charlotte Mitchell, I love you cuz. Michelle Copeland, Irma, Minister Irma Evans, Demetria Howard, my cousin Jackie Ross, Karen uh, Williams Green and Craig Green, Lisa Williams Simpson, and Ricky Simpson, Michelle Copeland, Arthur Evans, the head of the Evans clan. Hallelujah. Demetria Howard. Hallelujah. Prophetess Kimberly Graves. Hallelujah. My mom, Elder Odessa Marbley. Hallelujah. Antoinette Trips Crooks. Uh, 
Hallelujah. Karen and Craig Green. Sarah Richards. Brittany and TJ. Hallelujah. Sheila Monroe Blair. She's watching with us on tonight. Evangelist Wade Richards is watching with us on tonight. Hallelujah. Sierra Mitchell is watching with us on tonight. Hallelujah. Mary Nolan Hudson. That's my friend, y'all. Thanks for watching with us on tonight. Hallelujah. Hey, Miss Kitty Perkins. That's Brittany's mama, y'all. Abraham Matthew is watching with us on tonight. Hallelujah. Give me a... Lynette Thomas is watching with us up tonight. Lynette Thomas Williams. Grace to stand is watching with us. Florida Johnson. Hey, my friend, my classmate. She's watching with us on tonight. Rocky and Brandon, they're watching with us on tonight. Danny Kendricks is watching with us on tonight. Ernest is watching with us on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you for all that share this um, significant word. Thank you for all that, um, that were able to log in with us for this hour of power. Amen. And we're going to read to our words. It is 7, it is 7, uh, 754 um, right about now. 753 actually so we want to be um we want to be true to our word when we say this is just an hour of power i want you to have a fabulous uh, fantastic week amen in jesus name hallelujah let me pray over your offerings because i know you guys sow the seed on tonight god we thank you for every seed we thank you for every sower we know that little becomes much when we place it uh, in the master's hands now, God, breathe on the finance of the Greater Love Community Church. And we give you glory, honor, and praise in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, amen. Hallelujah. Have an amazing week. And remember that if God be for you, who can be against you? Uh, have I got a witness? If God be for you, who can be against you? Don't worry about your haters. Have I got a witness? They have already uh, been handled. Have I got a witness? Put it under your feet. And keep moving. Good night, good night, and good night.